now I was trying to uh, actually get the uh, the background music that was appropriate uh, for uh, for Dan's uh, personal endeavor, where he's actually uh, in a band called Blackened, which is a, a tribute band to Metallica. And I really wanted to have battery playing in the beginning of this while I uh, while I started off. But yeah, please go ahead if you want to if you want to put on the mic and and play the background music to to get things uh, kicked off here. That'd be that'd be perfect. Um, you can provide the background music while I'm doing your uh, your intro, and then you can tell me because I actually had a question for you before we started. My question was if there was a Metallica song that would be playing on loop in the background of this presentation. Um, what song would it be? So hold, hold that thought while I do the introduction and then you can uh, start off with, with answering that question. So Dan actually holds a, a number of uh, uh, certifications um, in order to basically, uh, you know, uh, he is the uh, threat response team lead for Motorola Solutions um, out of Chicago. Um, focus, his personal sort of professional focus is on threat hunting, EDR, network forensics, PCAP analysis, and uh, is of course the guitarist for, uh, for Blackened. So Dan, if I need to put music on for the background while you're representing, what would your, uh, what, what song would it be? What's your theme song? Uh, I don't know, let's do battery, you had that. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Do you have do you have that uh, just like plugged straight into your uh, into your computer so that you can play while you're uh, on on your Zoom meetings and be like, OK, oh, totally. I'm, I'm done with this. Totally. Notice how I notice how the, guitar is still <laughs> on the camera level so nobody can tell that I'm sitting here noodling. Yeah, perfect. You've got the you've got the camera level. Um, Rest um, in peace. Eddie Van Halen. Beautiful. And then there were none. More false positives. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dan Banker. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, do I have control? Oh, I can do things. So, yes, I am Dan Banker. I am the threat response team lead at Motorola Solutions. Uh, who am I? Nobody cares too much about this. I used to work at SecureWorks. I've got some certs, right? I'm working on my uh, GCFA right now. I'm into guitar. I'm into metal. I'm also into iRacing. Right behind me is my um, racing setup uh, where you can race um, online against people from around the world. Uh, I've done it for several years and I've noticed that uh, if you try to race anybody from Finland, you'll lose. I don't know, the people are just born with steering wheels in their hands, I have no idea. Um, should point out there are two Motorola's. I am not with the Motorola that does phones and modems and that kind of thing. Uh, we divested them in about 2012, I believe. Motorola Solutions uh, does mainly radios and cameras in the surrounding software. Uh, our primary customers would be fire, uh, police, military, that kind of thing. Oh, look, I can just use arrows. Okay, so um, quick rant. I've always thought it kind of silly that we use rock stars as a paradigm for high performing uh, IT practitioners. I've worked with a lot of both wannabe and real rock stars in the past. Uh, they tend to be immature. They tend to be not very good with money or relationships. They tend to have substance abuse problems and they die young sometimes. So I've always thought that was kind of silly. Also, I know that's not really Sid and Nancy. Uh, if you haven't seen the Sid and Nancy film from the 80s, it's a great early Gar uh, Gary Oldman performance. Um, so we're talking about EDR, not XDR like the last presentation. Uh, I hope I don't need to get into this too deeply, but uh, EDR is about telemetry. It's like a flight recorder. Uh, every time one of your hosts uh, starts or stops a program, modifies a file, modifies the registry, makes a network connection, uh, a couple of other things, it goes into a database and then we can search through it. If you've done any threat hunting, you should know that the more complete your database, the better your uh, hunts are going to be. So this is a real boon for us in the threat hunting world. Uh, also, there's usually some sort of uh, remediation part to this. Um, you can do things like quarantine hosts, kill rogue processes, get a memory dump, 
pull files uh, do stuff like that. So it uh, uh, really speeds up the remediation cycle too, especially if you can automate that stuff. Um, you can use whatever EDR product you want. I am most familiar with uh, Carbon Black Threat Hunter and Carbon Black Response, which uh, is now called, uh, sorry, Threat Hunter is now called Enterprise EDR. Uh, response is very confusingly just called VMware Carbon Black EDR. So uh, these theories that I'm gonna show you should work in whatever EDR you're working with, uh, but your mileage may vary. Uh, one of the vendors that didn't last very long in our shootout uh, just wanted to whitelist any noisy query, which that doesn't work for me at all because then you're introducing gaps in your detections. Uh, so we're, we've got this big database of, of interesting stuff. So we're going to search through it with a field followed by a value. Uh, so the first thing that we're looking for here is literally any process that's named cmd.exe, which of course is a command prompt. Uh, you can chain these queries together with logic statements, ands, ors, and nots. Uh, you'll see in some of my queries, uh, there's just a white space, like in the next one down here, process name, command.exe, with a netcon count of exactly one. Uh, Carbon Black interprets that white space as a logical and, so it's looking for command prompt and a netcon count of exactly one. You can also negate things. So the bottom thing that we're looking for here is command.exe not executing out of Windows slash system 32. You'll notice that I've had to escape uh, these slashes in the process path. So let's go on to the next thing, which is escaping. You have to escape everything in Carbon Black Threat Hunter. So if you've got a path that you're looking for like uh, codec slash AIO slash status monitor, blah, blah, blah. It becomes this monstrosity at the bottom where uh, you need to escape the colon, you need to escape every slash, you need to escape uh, the space after program and files, and you need to escape both of these um, parentheses. So this is what you end up with, but if you don't do this correctly, it will not find what you're looking for. So just to explain this, you'll see that in a lot of my queries. Uh, tokenization, I should explain this too. This uh, is uh, very powerful and I was glad that they introduced this in Carbon Black Response years ago. So if we've got this whole process path here, um, user slash great user, blah, 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 legit program dot exe, we can e um, search for it like this. We can just put quotes around it and find this entire thing. Uh, it's only going to find this executing out of this one user's app data slash legit program folder. Um, so luckily we can break this up uh, like users is a token, great user is a token, app data is a token and so on. So a bad way to find this activity would be just search for process name exe. That'll find anything that ends with exe, which of course is a horrible thing. You're gonna find every process that starts in your entire network but somewhere in there, legitprogram.exe will be included in your results. Uh, then you can also just search for legitprogram.exe that will find this executing out of any folder. So like any user, or even if it's not in the app data folder, if we want to narrow this down a little bit, uh, we could look for legitprogram slash legitprogram.exe. So that would find that executing out of once again, any user's uh, folder, but whether or not it's in uh, app data, and you see that I had to escape the slashes again. Also, I should point out, uh, Carbon Black is, the searches are not case sensitive. So this search will find this, even though the L and the P are capitalized up here. Uh, or you could look for anything executing out of the app data slash, slash legit program folder, with something like this. So no matter what the binary is named, it'll find it if it's executing out of that folder. So now let's talk about one of the cool things that they have uh, integrated with the new uh, Threat Hunter. Uh, also the CrowdStrike EDR offering does uh, use this as well. Um, I think it's uh, advanced malware scan interface. It's a product of Windows Defender. Uh, what this allows us to do in Threat Hunter is see fileless script load. So if you're looking at uh, you know, the, the older Drydex or sometimes Emotet, uh, they'll load scripts into PowerShell without ever writing them to disk. 
and that's what is going to find this. Also, it's going to uh, show us these without uh, any obfuscation. So if they, you know, base 64 it, gzipped it, put escape characters, whatever, uh, we'll see that without those in there. So this is really cool. And here's what a query for this looks like. Um, file a script load command line would be the field name. Uh, and this will find run once with any character before or after it. Or if you've worked with regular expressions, this probably gives you anxiety. Uh, this will find RUN with any character before or after it. Uh, or it'll find shell slash folders with any character before or after it. Uh, so as you may realize, this is uh, a great way to have lots of false positives. Here it is. So RUN is smack dab in the middle of this neighbor unreachability detection. Definitely not what we're looking for, but it's what we found because it was looking for RUN with any character before or after it. So you have to be really careful when you're using splats in your queries. I like to anchor things uh, as often as I can. So here's our problem. If um, you're in uh, an environment with mostly like uh, finance or uh, HR type people, they don't use PowerShell very often. So if you see base 64 encoded PowerShell happening, it's probably bad, right? Well, it doesn't work very well. We're trying to transition into more of a software rather than just a hardware company. So we have uh, this big population of developers and sysadmins. Problem is even when they're doing the right thing, their activity tends to look like hacking if you're not careful. So uh, also, you know, developers, uh, they're in a hurry like the rest of us. We're trying to get to market as soon as, po as possible. So they'll do things like, you know, run web apps as root, copy code from Stack Overflow without understanding what it means, uh, design an app without designing, uh, understanding how it can be used versus how it uh, is supposed to be used. Uh, they'll share passwords, they'll share databases between prod and dev, they'll not understand uh, security concepts like uh, the difference between encoding and encryption. Same thing if you've got uh, a lot of sysadmins, uh, I apologize if this uh, gives you anxiety too. Um, they'll run their sessions as root, uh, they'll stand up infrastructure and forget about it or not patch it or leave ports open on the internet. They'll copy scripts from Stack Overflow without understanding what they do. Uh, they'll share passwords. They'll turn down logging. So I don't mean to pick on sysadmins or developers, but they're power users. So differentiating power users from uh, hackers can be difficult. And that's kind of what I'm going to try and focus on. So I mentioned Base64. Um, if you see PowerShell executing with from base64 string in the command line, it means it's going to be decoding the base64. Uh, quick aside here, I believe these are the four ways that you can see PowerShell executing in a Windows environment. It's not just PowerShell.exe, it might show up as PowerShell uh, ISE.exe or PWSH.exe or SQLPS.exe. So that's why when I'm looking for PowerShell, I look for all four of those things. Uh, what we're looking for here is any PowerShell executing with from base64 string. But I got a lot of false positives on that. Uh, and I realized that most of them came with agent.worker.exe as the parent. So um, when I did the um, query without that not statement, I got a lot of um, false positive results. Uh, I realized that these were developers doing developer things on these build machines and deployer machines, but I didn't want to whitelist any machines uh, entirely. I want to try to filter out only the specific activity that I don't want, right? So when I added the not statement, now I don't have any false positive results that I have to get rid of. Um, same thing with net user. This could be interesting. Maybe it's not, could be noisy for you, but uh, all we're looking for here is the command shell with net user in the command line. Uh, that uh, there can be a lot of false positives if uh, you see a parent of gpscript.exe. So that's why I'm filtering that out. Uh, we can filter out command lines that uh, we're not interested in. So there may or may not be a great thing to track. Um, usually what I'm trying to do with something like this is track it in combination with something else. Like if I see them running dir and net and some other things in a, uh, a short amount of time, 
that to me is interesting. So uh, a process like this uh, may be kind of noisy for you, even if we filter all these other things out. Quick point about the logic here, carbon block uh, Carbon Black doesn't want a whole bunch of not statements. Uh, they've told me that if I want to negate a bunch of different things, I need to use one not statement and separate everything I want to filter out with ORs. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, so basically, I want to see dir, but not uh, with earl.exe as the process, not with earl.exe as the parent, uh, not with ccstudio.exe or g2m start.exe as a parent. I don't know why go to meeting needs to run dir every time it launches, but it does. And it's not, that's not the activity that I'm looking for. So I filtered it out. Uh, same things, we're, uh, we're lucky enough here. Um, Jenkins cause all kinds of false positives for me. Uh, and our users or uh, developers were working on a, um, a project uh, that uh, I changed the code name, but the code name was Quinta for our purposes here. Uh, and when I got rid of Quinta Jenkins in the command line, it filtered out a bunch of false positives for me. Uh, same thing with Quinta slash WinRow or WinRoss uh, underscore nine. Uh, sometimes you'll see a path in the command line. So uh, here what I'm looking for is MSHTA spawning PowerShell, uh, which it's not a great detection right now. It used to be a few years ago. I've, I've uh, not had a lot of good uh, hits on it recently. But uh, one of the things that I realized was, I think this was our help desk would um, run this check for update thing on the user's desktops. So when I filtered that out so that it didn't appear in the command line, that made this a, a better detection for me. This one, what we're looking for is um, a registry modification to software, Microsoft, PowerShell. So it's looking for the execute the PowerShell execution policy being changed by a pro uh, process other than PowerShell. Um, the thing is, uh, if you have Dells in your environment, uh, there are a couple of different executables running out of Dell slash uh, support assist agent slash bin uh, that also change the uh, PowerShell execution policy. I don't know why, but it's it's legit. So that's why I uh, wanted to filter this out. Uh, if you have scanners in your environment, this might be useful. So what we're looking for here is um, reg or reg.exe um, and then save and then either SAM or system in the command line. So right here, so like reg save system that's why we would get a, a hit here. Uh, but I realized that for some reason, Rapid7, uh, I think it was when they started doing credentialed scans for us, they would commonly save uh, the system hive. I don't know why, but um, luckily for me, they always saved it in program files slash Rapid7 slash something. So when I um, filter Rapid7 out of the command line, remember the tokenization, so it uh, sees this string all by itself and I don't have to worry about the splat uh, before or after it. Uh, so once I was able to filter that out, I didn't see this in my results anymore. Okay, so let's talk about the AMSI stuff for a second. Uh, a PowerShell download cradle is generally um, indicated by uh, dot download file or dot download data or dot download string in the command line. Um, so in file a script load command line is the way we would find this in carbon black. Uh, problem is there are uh, an annoying uh, number of legitimate programs that also do this. So chocolatey, um, I think that's some sort of a package manager. I'm, I'm not really sure, but it, it's, it's probably not malware that's being downloaded with PowerShell. So I, I filtered it out. Um, same thing with VirtualBox. VirtualBox appears to use PowerShell in a file a script load to um, download updates. Um, I'm going to come back to Julia for a second uh, in a moment. Um, also, I noticed a lot of my developers and sysadmins pulling um, or using PowerShell to pull updates from some other internal machine. So I was able to filter out uh, the class A net to um, reduce some of those. So then Julia, um, here's uh, another thing. This is uh, 
this is the way we would see the file of script load in uh, Carbon Black. It's a little bit nicer rather than this. So here's our download cradle uh, web client uh, dot download file. Um, and it's here's the resource that's being downloaded, everything from here to here. Um, so I don't want to um, negate this entire thing because this whole string here is probably going to change quite a bit. However, I noticed that this URL was in just about all of the traffic that uh, was using Julia to or, or updating the Julia package. So if I look for this, but negate this, um, I have a better, uh, better detection because of that. Uh, here's another one. Um, here are uh, ways that we can find portable executables being uh, loaded into memory. And what this is, uh, this is uh, the base 64 representation of a magic number, uh, you know, the MZ header. So these are the ways that it can appear in base 64. Unfortunately, I was getting a lot of uh, false positives because of this. Uh, I can't remember what this was, but it was it was saving uh, the output in app data slash roaming. And then it would sometimes have TVPQ, which if we go back here, these are one of the things that we're looking for. And unfortunately, because of the characters that are before and after it, you had to surround it with splats. So I had to get creative uh, with how to filter tvpq.txt out. Uh, so this is how I did it, um, just to explain the expression. So any character, then tv, then any character, um, followed by a literal dot txt. So when I added that, that filtered out this activity here. And I'm running out of time. So uh, sometimes, uh, as the wise man said, you got to know when to fold them. EDR is not the perfect tool for everything, uh, especially like network scanners. It's not a great way to find that. Uh, sometimes you're just barking up the wrong tree. What you're trying to do isn't going to work. Move on and uh, work on something that will give you a better return. Also, test, test, test. Check for false positive, especially check for false negatives. Um, if you have a red team, engage them. Uh, if your pen testing team, uh, whenever they come in, uh, engage them as well. Make sure that they're testing your detections to make sure that they're finding what uh, you want them to find. Uh, revisit them every so often, every six months, every quarter, something like that. Uh, every uh, watch list is going to have a um, limited time where it's, it's really effective. Uh, so modify them, add them, delete them uh, as necessary. And thank you very much. You can find me on Twitter at Cyber Shredder. Uh, my band uh, has an Instagram at Black in Chicago. Also hashtag Save Our Stages. Uh, the performing arts industry is dying because of COVID. Um, it's not just rock concerts. It's uh, theater, museums. Uh, those kinds of things are all in serious trouble because of COVID and uh, they're not going to be around without our help. Thank you very much.